Well, this car is not going to fix itself, so I better get to work. Today, drop spindles, disc brakes, and we can take care of some of this tire gap. Straight up and down, against the speed cap, about 28 and a quarter. We can do better than that. I am going underneath the car today, so we're going to use jack stand. This isn't by any means necessary when doing drop spindles and disc brakes, but since it's so easy to do because these things are only held on by two bolts and they're only finger tight, I'm going to pull off the fender. Give me a little bit more access, then give you guys a better view. at how clean this stuff is. Now granted I did hit it with a pressure washer but I mean, we do have some debris in there but I mean look at that upper control arm. The grub screw all that stuff is just super super clean. That one's a little bit more greasy but all in all this thing's just super clean and super dry. Makes our life a little bit easier now, doesn't it? All right, so, gotta pull out the speedometer cable. We'll loosen this nut, and this nut, and this nut, which one I can get this spindle up and out of the way. Uh, for sheer sake of making this thing a little easier to deal with, probably pull off the shock. Probably leave on the sway bar. We'll see how that goes. This tie rod end has to come out because we'll have to swap this to a larger unit because our drop spindles have a larger shaft. Um, probably gonna just cut this brake line. Let's get to it. Well, that was nice. That makes that easy, but. But I'm on a cable. Tuck that up out of the way. Ooh, that ball joint, we might be replacing that. I'd say we don't have much shock. You gotta do what you gotta do. That's hot. Let's disconnect our brake line. Make sure it's been really easy. I'm just gonna cut it. There, easy. Let's get that guy busted loose. If you have to beat on the threads, put a nut over the threads. And since this thing's castellated, we'll put it on backwards. Putting tension on the stud. Ooh. Well, looking at our 
old brake drum. I'm not even going to bother tearing it apart, but we can see that both of our pins were loose. So that means all the springs and stuff inside are all just free and crazy. Not a problem no more. These are a problem though. Ball joint, that's really loose. That boot is torn to bits. Now I got to debate on whether or not I'm going to go just put new arms on, which we do offer, or if I want to press these out and press new ones in. We have a press. Decisions, decisions. Well, I know I'm going to have to pull this off, so. Uh, new. 6877, left hand thread, left out. Little anti-seize. Take note about how much thread is sticking out versus the last one to center line. That should get us in the ballpark. While we're here, since we're definitely going to have to adjust it, might as well make sure this guy's free. Oh, that's actually really nice. Must have been a lot less rust on the inside. Ah, come on. Beautiful. All right. I got to decide what I'm going to do on these. In kind of keeping with the spirit of let's do this cheap, I'm just going to press out these ball joints and press in new ball joints. That's definitely going to be the cheaper option versus buying a new set of control arms with ball joints. We do have a couple of options, whether it be the MP, uh, new MP arms um, or the air-cooled pro-built arms that both come with new ball joints pressed in. But again, cheapest option is going to be pull these out and just replace these ball joints. So I'm going to pull these arms off. And that begins by prying these guys out. Um, that doesn't look good. I better adjust that real quick. All right, well, I didn't plan on going this far deep into it, but here we are. I've got everything taken off this side so I can put some new ball joints in. Um, I don't have my ball joint cups here. They're at my house, so I'll have to wait till tomorrow for that. But I'm just going to get everything on the other side pulled apart just like this, and I will film it all, and anything special should comes up, we'll show that. All right, since I'm kind of dead in the water until I go home, get my ball joint tool. I've got everything disassembled. I've got a new tie rod end in both sides. I need to get new ball joints pressed into either control arm, upper, lower, left, right. Once I get all that done, I can obviously put on the new spindles and the disc brakes and all that stuff. I'm going to start cleaning out the interior a little bit because it's dirty and yucky. And I actually just noticed that we've got a lot of debris under the passenger side rear floor, which means that floor pan had been had an insert on the inside. That's why it seems kind of solid, but it's actually not. So I'm probably gonna have to do a floor pan along the rust repair. If you see that nice little hole on the back of the fender well at the bottom of the A pillar, that's very rusted out and there's no metal there left. Obviously we'll have to repair that. So there's stuff to do. Is it going to kill the car's roadworthiness with a little rust? Mm, no, but it can be taken care of. 
and it's better to do it sooner rather than later. But we'll see how far I get with all the rust repairs before the show. All right, so we've got everything pulled off the car, front end's all cleaned up for the most part, ready to start putting things back together once I get the new ball joints back in place, uh, pressed in place. But in the meantime, let's take a look at what we got in our boxes of disc brake parts. Heavy boxes, box one. Paper, don't need that. Disc brake instructions, please read first. I'll read that last. Goodness gracious, that's not light. Made in Brazil, heavy like a brake rotor. Also, goodness gracious, another brake rotor. And that's our brake rotor. Disc brake section. They are conveniently enough double drilled. 5x130 pattern and 5x205 pattern, which is what we'll be using. We do need to press in the bearing races here and here. All right, box two. Brake hose is handy because I just cut our originals. The main reason, well, second main reason, first reason, I don't know. First reason we want to lower the car, second reason because it just breaks. Anyway, drop spindles. These, obviously, the stock spindle came out down here in between the two ball joints. Drop spindles do exactly just that. They take the spindle and they move it up to drop the front of the car. So if we were to mount that and that there, see this spindle's way up here. This spindle's way down here, so that's where we get our... Ah, don't drop the spindle. Especially not in your toe, that might hurt. Other side spindle. Lots of hardware. New bearings with races. New thrust washers. Axle nuts. Wheel seals. And caliper mounting hardware and caliper spacers in varying thicknesses to set the spacing on the caliper to the bracket. The big reason why we're doing all this, disc brakes, calipers. So a lot more stopping power than the original wheel cylinders. So there we go. That is our disc brake drop spindle kit. Unbox. Here's the drop spindle. Here's our old tie rod end. And you see it is too small, which is why I've already gone through and pulled these out and swapped them out to the larger shaft, later model tie rod ends. One more thing we've got just to complete everything. New dust caps that are specific to these brake rotors. So buying that one kit and these two caps, we get everything that we just took off right here. So we've got new hoses, we've got new spindles, seal bearings, rotor instead of that, thrust washers, outer bearings, axle nut, and obviously a new cap. So we've got everything to replace this entire unit that we just pulled off the car. And we don't even have to bother opening this thing up, but we will save these in case somebody out there needs them. All right, I'm gonna start cleaning up. Um, I don't need that. Dash grab handle hardware. There, that's a little bit better. There's no gas cap on this tank. No fuel in the tank. Wonder how clean it is in there. That's some real life varnish running in around in there, but the tank itself is really quite clean and rust free. So I'm gonna rinse this guy out and we're gonna reuse it. Because why not? It's got a beautiful patina on it. I 
Never thought I would say that. Well, the trunk looks much cleaner. Uh, kind of rusty, but it's, it's clean. 